Today we're going to discuss some clinical cases that uh, are challenging when dealing with the dental dam. We're going to talk a little bit about isolating around fixed bridges. There are several methods for isolating around an existing fixed bridge. Uh, one method is to ligate floss under the solder joints and not the floss to form a seal around each solder joint, as you can see in the photo on top of your slide. The dental dam is punched for each tooth, including the abutment and the ponics. In the second method, no hole is punched for the ponic. Instead, wedge cord is threaded through each solder joint using a floss threader and make sure that floss threader is quite stable. Uh, you need a sturdy floss threader. Or in this case, I used a blunted sewing needle. Uh, I flossed the uh, wedge cord through the eye of the needle and went under the solder joint. The third method is to use the two or three hole general field isolation. Generally, there is a slit that is cut into the dam so there is no interceptal dam located in the region of the bridge. I will now demonstrate the general field isolations as these are the easiest to achieve and less time consuming. The first one I'm going to show you is the two hole. Now that's pretty easy. All you need to do is make two holes and you cut a slit between hole one and two. The three hole, you make an additional hole. I usually use a wing clamp and the wing clamp is inserted into the last hole. So we're going to use the uh, framed flexidam and that is the easiest to use. And what you're going to do is you're going to cut a hole or a slit between hole one and two, leaving the third hole for your clamp. You just simply insert the wings into the dental dam. Like that, okay? So this is how it looks before it goes to the mouth. Now normally I have my safety floss ligation coming out from the buckle side. And you might be asking, why do I need a safety ligation? Well, in the event the clamp becomes dislodged, you have a means of retrieving that clamp. All right, and you're going to seat it on your tooth, and then you're going to carry your dam to an area where there's no bridge and you can pass some dental floss and anchor your dental dam. Again, the wedge cord trick I'm going to show you. Just insert your wedge cord into the loop of the floss like this and hold on to one end while you pull the other end through the contact, just like that. Alright, so now uh, what you want to do is you want to stretch your dam off the wings. And remember, we want to stretch it so that we're using the side of the instrument, just like this, so we don't tear it. On the lingual, we can use our finger, although you can turn your instrument and in this direction and push off. But because I have room on the, on the lingual, I'm going to just simply stretch, stretch it off. Just like that. Okay, so now I have mesial dam here. The, my bridge work is right here, okay? So you basically will have mesial dental dam, an proximal dam, on your anchor tooth, and then you're carrying your slit all the way to another area where you can place your wedge at core through the contact. And then all that you have to do is simply roll this under like this and roll it under on your lingual surface as well. Now, granted, it, it, 
it doesn't quite give you the same advantage of using your interceptal dam as far as your isolation, but it's certainly still protecting the patient's soft tissues, the cheeks and lips and tongue, and you can perform your services very readily. You've got an excellent accessibility to the area, and you have a, an accessible outcome of your procedure. We're going to talk a little bit about fixed prosthetic procedures and using the dental dam. You know, using the dental dam for crown preparation and temporization will provide better access and increase your proficiency. The procedural steps are as follow. First of all, you need to take a preoperative impression for temporization. Secondly, you need to take a bite registration. Isolate the dental dam using a three-hole general field method. And we suggest using a non-latex dental dam, particularly if you're using a PVS impression material. So let me demonstrate what your three-hole isolation would look like. Uh, you're going to mark your dental dam with three holes, and you're going to punch the three holes, and you are then going to make a slit between hole one and two, just like that. You'll insert a wing clamp usually works best. You'll insert your wing clamp. Obviously, the anchor tooth is going to be distal to the area in which you're working. And when this is in place, this is how your dental dam will look. So we're basically would be uh, preparing uh, either your uh, canine or your bicuspid area, and you would have already taken your necessary preliminary uh, uh, bite registration and your temporization impression. So once you have your three hole dam in position, the next step is uh, to um, and during the reduction of your preparation, you're going to use the bite registration to determine the your occlusal tooth reduction during the preparation phase. The next step is you are performing your gingival retraction procedure. You'll take your final impression, fabricate and seat your temporization, and you remove your dental dam and check occlusion.